In this tutorial, we will be demonstrating how easy it is to manage user profiles within your virtual desktop environment using the VDI Toolkit. We will also look at some of the associated pitfalls with user profiles. And lastly, we will demonstrate how the VDI Toolkit helps with those pitfalls. Let's start with talking about what the VDI Toolkit is not. It is not a user profile mechanism such as folder redirection or persona profiles. It's meant to help maintain your user profile stores, so it's not meant to replace those items. So what are the problems with user profiles? First, it is hard to recognize stale profiles that need clean up. This could be Active Directory user accounts no longer in use that have been either deleted or disabled. Another issue is it's hard to visualize which users are the biggest data consumers within an organization. This can be a pain when trying to determine why all of a sudden disk space on a user profile server has been depleted. Lastly, it can be a task trying to delete app data folders in corrupted user profiles. Now, if user profiles are spread across multiple servers and file shares, it can be even more troublesome. In many scenarios, IT departments create a lot of scripts to help alleviate these issues. But as we all know, there can be issues with scripts such that accidents are made that affect other users. Let's talk about how the VDI Toolkit tries to help with user profiles. First, it gives a visualization of profile size to help track down the biggest data consumers. It also provides easy access to not only visualize, but also delete stale or unused profiles. It also provides easy access to delete app data folders within corrupted user profiles. And lastly, it combines data across multiple file servers or file shares for easier management. Up next, we will demonstrate managing user profiles using the VDI Toolkit. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, first, um, what we'll want to do is go ahead and open up the management console. And I have that running on a virtual desktop. So we'll go ahead and open that. Once that's open, we'll go ahead and expand it and we'll want to navigate to profiles. Once we navigate to profiles, we'll see a couple things here. First, uh, on the right hand side, we can see that we see our profiles and we can search for those. Uh, and then on the left side, what we see is uh, what's called profile sync point. So what a profile sync point is, is basically it's each server that actually hosts profile shares. So one of these is only created for each individual server. So if you have a server with multiple profile shares, it's still only one profile sync point. It's for each individual server. Now I already have one added here and with profiles and that's so I have historical data over a period of time so I can demonstrate some of the features. But to add a profile sync point, it's as easy as just taking and expanding here and giving it a name, a description, a fully qualified domain name, and hitting add. Uh, once you add it, it'll be down here, and you can edit it and uh, go to file shares, and you can actually add each individual file share for that profile sync point, because you may have file shares for just standard folder redirection, uh, or you may have file shares for um, persona profiles on the same server. Now here we, when we add one, we add the profile share name and that's the actual share. And then we also give it a conversion rule. And what a conversion rule is done for is um, to convert the folder name to the SAM account name. And that uses a regular expression. And the reason that's needed is with standard folder redirection, it's no big deal because when you use standard folder redirection, it creates the folder name the same as this user SAM account name. When using something like Persona though, and depending on which version of Persona, the folder names are different and are usually end in uh, like a V1, V2, or a V3 for the version. And I'll just kind of demonstrate that just to show you. So when we add a profile share, we click here and then we would give it the profile share name. I'll go ahead and just make one up right now. And then what we do is the conversion rule. So let's say 
this it automatically populates the standard conversion rule which is to take the whole folder name and use that as the same account name but let's say we this was for a persona, uh, persona uh, user profile share then we would want to convert this and I have a regular expression here to demonstrate so I'll go ahead and paste this and then we can actually test that so in that case it would be let's say it's version 2 and we can go ahead and do a test and you can see that it extracts the same account name from the folder name in this case so I'll go ahead and cancel here and cancel this and you can add as many as you want I'll go ahead and close this once all that is set up you then synchronize it so to synchronize the profile sync point all you do is come here and click on sync it'll ask for a confirmation that you want to sync you'll hit OK and then it will perform the sync uh, afterwards it'll let you know the last time it was uh, synced now you can manually sync it any time that you want but just to note there it there is also an automated schedule that it syncs on as well and that setting can be changed in the server settings and if you want more information on that please watch the video tutorial on server settings and from there you can you can change whatever time you want uh, whether it be at night or in the morning to actually sync the profile shares and collect the the information now in the profile section, we can see the profiles and we can see that we have some here that we have some red items where the folder's red. So let's talk about why this could end up being red. There's a couple of reasons. One, it could be red uh, if there was an error traversing the file share and that could happen due to permission issues or something along those lines. Uh, another issue could be uh, if it's uh, linked to an inactive user in active directory so that would be an active directory user account that's disabled and another issue could be that it's not linked to a user in active directory at all such that the user doesn't exist in active directory and really what that's for is to help you find stale or unused profiles so you can go and clean those up and delete them uh, and not let those continuously grow indefinitely on your profile uh, on your user profile server um, so we also we can search um, and so there's search here right here we actually have a search settings so we can see that we can just um, do our search based on profiles not linked to a user only or linked to an inactive user only or search profiles with errors traversing the share only once uh, you see these profiles you can actually take and you can uh, either right click or double click on and go to view details and from the view details screen it'll give you information about it such as size which profile sync point it's linked to uh, whether there were errors traversing the share what user it's linked to and whatnot the other cool thing about this piece too is you can actually navigate the profile history and you can see a graphical representation of the user profile growth this can come in handy if you're trying to see when somebody's profile all of a sudden grew all of a sudden and it'll give you historical dates of what the size was over that period of time that you can see it keeps 365 days worth of data on the profile so that way you can see a, a good graphical representation of the profile growth I'll go ahead and hit OK here the other cool thing is is we can actually from here take and we can delete a profile so let's say we have stale profiles on here that we know the user no longer exists and we want to go ahead and clean those up we can delete the profile we can also rename the profile if we needed to and we can also reset the app data resetting the app data is basically deleting the app data folder in 
a profile that has redirection of the app data. So it could be a, a standard folder redirection where app data is being redirected, or it could be a persona profile. A lot of times that's the fix whenever there's a corrupt profile is you just delete the app data folder and then let them log back in and generate a new app data folder. That way they can still keep their um, documents, desktop shortcuts, videos, music, etc. So from there, um, it's easy to search. And so we could, we can come here and search and say, Hey, we want to look for profiles that are linked to inactive users only. And then we can go ahead and do a standard search and we can pull this up and we can see that this user has a profile and this user is inactivated in active directory. So let's just say this user no longer works for the company and we want to go ahead and delete their profile. So it's no longer taking up space on the profile share. So we can right click, we can delete profile. It'll prompt us if we want to do it, we'll hit okay. I'll come back here and clear our search settings. And as we can see that profile is gone. And if I come back and resync with the profile sync point, we can see that that user is no longer there. So that's been deleted and that space has been freed up on the profile server. You'll notice too that for ones that there are a possible issue where it's not linked to a user or anything like that, that we highlight that in red that way to make it easier to identify when you're coming through and searching. And that's pretty much it with this. Um, I hope this tutorial has been useful and thank you.